So today we're going to talk about how to attack on Pearl, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about how to defend this map as well. I'm going to try and keep it as uh, general as possible, you know, not talking about specific agents, but let's take a look at this map and how you might go about attacking it. And what we've got on the screen right now is essentially all of the choke points on the map. So the choke points are the positions on the map where the uh, defenders are probably going to make their stand, right? They're going to put their utility there, they're going to try and stop you getting through those points, and the attackers are going to have to try and, you know, breach through uh, those areas of the map and take that space. Space. Uh, but one thing you might notice straight away is that there isn't a choke point on this entire uh, B long kind of side of the map. Uh, the reason that for that is, is because this area here is just too big to be considered a choke point. There isn't really, you know, you can't throw a molly down on this area of the map the attackers will just walk around it. Uh, so, you know, there isn't really a choke point coming all the way down here towards this B site and up onto the site as well. And so let's actually start with this B site and talk about how you might go about attacking it. And luckily for us in this video, attacking this B site, I think is going to be very easy. I think this is probably going to be one of, if not the easiest sites uh, to plant on in the entire game. Uh, because as I said, there is no choke point. If you do just want to five man run it down here, I think that's a very viable strategy because there is no choke point and there isn't too many areas that defenders can play. I've circled kind of the three areas that I think defenders might play in to try and stop you coming down here. Uh, but actually, if we look at this one behind this box and in this little cubby here as well, these two areas can really, I think, only be played very well by Chamber and Yoru, you know, agents that can actually escape far away from them once they've got a kill. So if you're not playing those agents, you know, I really wouldn't recommend, you know, playing in these positions too often because you probably might get one kill, but then you'll just get traded out straight away. And then the third one is just back here. And in general, I think unless your opponent has an op, simply running it down as a five man, you know, just execute towards B it's probably going to be very successful because there isn't going to be many ways they can stop you from doing that. And then once you've got the spike down, ideally it would be planted, you know, somewhere around here. Everyone just retreats, you know, you just send people back here and you just start spamming the spike basically right from these different angles. That is how I see it playing out, you know, very icebox like in a way. Uh, that is how I think that this B site will play out for the most part. And if we take a look at some of the early games on Pearl, uh, like this one, Genji versus V1, Genji are on the attack here and they are going to come towards uh, this B site. And you see, they are going to use the utility to clear out those three angles and then just go, right? They send a Prowler into this little cubby here. They're going to throw a Seize back there and Seize that, see no, Seize no one. Little KO nade goes towards that back corner as well. You're on B site. And this is how I expect it to play out for a lot of what's going on on B, is we're going to see a lot of just, you know, fast running it down, plant the spike, and a lot of retakes from the defensive side. But now let's move on to the other side of B, the mid side of B, if you will, because this is very, very different to uh, what's going on down long B. Uh, this could not be more different, in fact, uh, because there are choke points here and they are very small choke points at that. So let's say that we wanted to attack B from mid, right? So let's say we want to do this. Is that a good idea? No, it's a terrible idea. You shouldn't really do it. In fact, I wouldn't recommend doing this at all to be honest, because your alternative is just running to site and planting for pretty much free a lot of the time. Uh, or you can decide to do this, which I think is extremely difficult to run through this mid side of B. This is a very small choke point that you can easily be stopped by with really a lot of bit different bits of utilities. You can even get one ways here for the defenders in multiple ways as well. So it's just going to be so hard to actually breach through this that I think it honestly won't be worth it a lot of time. But even if you do, even if you do manage to get through here with multiple players, the problem is then coming all the way down here is a very, very long path to take. And at any point, a defender might be able to just wrap behind you and get a free kill, right? And then the thing is, once you've come all the way down here, this is a very small choke point to get through as well to actually get in onto the site. So again, you can be stopped pretty easily potentially by the defenders with some utility and you do not want to be in a situation where you are stuck in this position here and potentially getting pinched uh, like this from the defenders. That is not somewhere you want to be uh, for very long with essentially no escape, right? Because this is going to be a very long time to actually escape out of this. So that is not a great place to be in. And so I think, you know, when your alternative is just going to site for pretty much free uh, or coming through this death trap, I think 
why would you ever choose this side of mid B? Uh, but then there is an alternative, right? You could come through here and push towards spawn. Now, I do think that early on, this might be something that does work. And I've seen multiple pro teams now on this map try this kind of strategy. Uh, it hasn't worked great. And the reason that it hasn't worked great is because, again, running through here is difficult enough. But then this is a very small choke point as well. And so, you know, I don't think for the most part it is going to work that great. Um, and again, it's, it's very difficult where once you come through here, you know, you have to be worried about two different angles angles again like it i think overall that this is something that might catch people off guard early on but as the map becomes more familiar to people this is something that eventually just won't be tried either because teams will know how to react to it for the most part so again i don't think unless you have some super insane strategy of how you want to do this that that is honestly a good idea long term either before this, let's come to round seven of the same game, V1 versus Gen G, and we will see that uh, Gen G do try and push in here, as you can see, in towards this uh, B side of mid, and they actually do get this smoke up, and they send the jet in, and you see that we've got the jet already there. The jet's going to go dashing in, but run into two people and die, and now we end up with this problem, right? That it was a bit discoordinated there. Yeah, sure, the jet only had a bucky or whatever, and trying to get a a kind of cheeky kill there but now now they have a problem right that these people are, are snuck in here as you can see but you can see that they are in a bit of a problem and this smoke is eventually going to fade and a free kill is going to come to Effie's here as you know rhyme is just completely unaware that he can be killed from there Effie's gets the second one as well and they're essentially screwed right and so they have to retreat and this is how i see this part of the map playing out quite a lot where you you have to worry about multiple angles you don't know which one to look at and you essentially if you're going to get bogged down because the choke point are so small and then eventually you'll just die and now let's come to the a side of the map and we'll start with kind of the outside portion of a coming down here on the outside and just going through a main uh, i do think that again running down this as a five stack is probably pretty possible uh you know there isn't going to be too many problems early on what you will want to do is clear out some of this early angles now you'll probably want to use some initiator utility here or or something here maybe a cypher cam even could do it as well just to make sure that you know no one's like playing around this box you know i think that this is a very powerful angle for potential chambers uh, uh, you know but anywhere in these in these areas you will need a bit of utility to just make sure that these defenders are pushed back and so that you can get early control coming up to the choke point so that will be kind of your first goal as the attackers is to just clear out some of these potential cheeky angles uh, that the defenders could be playing in but once you've done that and we actually come towards uh, the site itself uh, then again five man exacting i don't think will be too bad uh coming here towards a i'm not saying it'll always work there will be problems but you do have one advantage that is when you're coming in onto site here uh there is no close left right you can just clear this close right corner and i think again this is a very much a one and done angle for defenders you might get one but the second one is probably going to elude you most of the time uh because the attackers can just come and isolate this right hand side they don't have to worry about the left just yet as they're coming in onto site so you know this is probably not a great position to play mostly for defenders and then you start looking at the site and you think well, where am I going to play as a defender, right? Like you have only one box on this site. And so I think, again, in general, if you send like a nade or a molly just to land in behind this box, that's going to be extremely effective as the attackers in general. Uh, because if you get with something here and you check this close right corner and there's no one there, well, then the, the options for defenders become more and more limited in terms of where they can play. You know, they might be playing somewhere back here. There might be someone back here. And I think a crucial part of it is as well, I expect that this will be a very important little corridor as well well on this a site where you will commonly see defenders at some point uh, but again i think five man exacting on here will have some success you'll need to clear out some of this early portion of the map uh, but overall it won't be too bad and so for this, let's take a look at round number nine of this game, where I, well, that's exactly what we're going to see. We get early KO knife, Prowler, right? Some of this initiator utility just to push these people back, make sure that they get deep on A. And then what we're going to see is, and I just want you to take note of the positions as well of the V1 players, is we have this Reyna behind the box here. She's going to come and hide here. And you've got Xander here uh, playing deep towards uh, the little dugout here as well. In they start to come. And I think, as I said, this is going to be pretty normal for where defenders are going to play. We end up with a judge kill there. I think actually V1 are going to manage to win this round. But in general, you see that a five-man exit, you can get in onto this site. It's not going to be super hard, I don't think, to actually come in onto this site overall. I think that if it's well executed, and as I said, nades back in here uh, are going to be... Uh, a very impactful i think overall and as teams get better at attacking this map i think you know maybe some utility towards this area as well uh, will basically limit defenders options very heavily but now let's come towards the short side of a and this is part of the map that i'm kind of 
perhaps most interested in seeing what teams will uh, actually do here because I think there's potential for both sides to either the defensive side just completely lock it down or for the attacking side to find some real potential value here as well depending on exactly how the game goes. Uh, so one thing we have to consider is obviously that there are kind of multiple points that defenders can fall back to and, you know, kind of come to and defend this, right? The first one is going to be in this area here towards art. We're going to need to push someone off that angle, right? So we're going to need to use some utility to either clear this space or, or push someone out of this space overall, right? That's going to be a big part of how you start to attack this short area is this uh, first area towards art. And you're going to need to take control. Now, once you've got control of this area, I actually think it could be very beneficial to you just leave someone there and then potentially explore the rest of the map or go do an A split hit uh, because this person here could very easily catch uh, either if you go towards B, right, if someone comes across this way or if you do decide to go to A, you can catch those rotations off pretty easily by just having someone, you know, just hide behind this box, wait for the noise and then, uh, you know, potentially get a free kill. So I do think that that is one thing uh, that we might see teams uh, do is just leave someone in this kind of area around this box and just have this control. Uh, could be very, very deadly position to play from. Uh, but then if we do want to, you know, push forward towards the site and make this kind of the, the spear of our attack, essentially, then we are going to have some questions, right? The first one is uh, you're going to have to deal with a little crossfire here of someone maybe being there and someone behind uh, this box that as soon as this person sees you, you know, you're, you might get a swing from this box. And then how are you going to deal with that, right? So obviously you do need and you probably will smoke this off. Uh, but even if this is smoked off, you know, it could still happen where this person just jiggle peeks here, sees where you are, and then you potentially get a rush or a flash through here, right? And they come at you. So that's going to be one thing that you are going to need to think about how you want to deal with this kind of little crossfire angle here. And then even when you are pushing onto site, you do have that same problem again of making sure you don't get reflanked. That's something you're going to have to think about. So again, maybe just leaving someone here no matter what in case there is a reflank, uh, will be somewhat viable overall uh, and using this space in art to uh, try and get some free kills. I think that that will be a pretty good strategy overall. But let's say we've dealt with all of that, right? We've dealt with the reflank. We're actually coming in onto the site here from this uh, shorter position of A, the mid side of A. Right, so we're doing an A split. We've got this mid side of A. What are the advantages of doing this? Well, the first one is as we come around here, anyone here is just absolutely screwed, right? If they're focused on this and you come around here, they are just absolutely done for. And unless they go absolutely crazy, you should be, you know, getting that kill pretty reliably overall. And even if you aren't the one getting the kill, it should be very easily traded uh, to anyone sitting in this uh, close corner here. So that's the first advantage. The second one is, and this is going to be very interesting. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. Uh, because because it kind of reminds me of Ascent, where if you come from uh, towards A on Ascent through mid, uh, what you'll often see uh, teams do is they'll quickly run up the left side of Gen and catch people off guard on the back side of the site. And I think there is potential for that to happen again, where if we smoke this off, right, we saw those uh, V1 players playing in here and playing back here, that if someone had come through short and quickly ran down here, these guys would have been absolutely screwed in that instance, right? And that would have been free kills and whatnot. But the problem is it's not quite like Ascent, where there is a hard wall on your left. This isn't a hard wall. So someone could potentially come out here as well and now all of a sudden you're the one that's kind of having to look in two directions and you might be the one that is in trouble so i think that again that could be a very interesting dynamic to see how this plays out that once you know people do start doing this potentially you know is there a quick reaction from people behind this smoke you know and and what is the protocols for defensive teams when this happens i'm going to be very interested to see is it attackers sided or do defenders figure out how that works and they just completely shut it down? In which case then, you know, I would say that pushing towards this uh, mid side of A maybe isn't as viable. And now quickly, let's come to defaulting on this map. And I'll just very quickly talk about this. The first part is, I think for a default, you'll only need uh, one person on B, and that is someone about up here, just making sure that no defender crosses that line. As long as no defender crosses that line, again, the only places you need to check for are, again, the same three angles we talked about before. So that is absolutely fine, right? So you can just have someone play on their own pretty passively, uh, just making sure that no one crosses that line. And if they do, you'll have the info that they are. And so, you know, that won't be great for them. So that's the first part. You won't need to commit too much to uh, defaulting on B, which again, just makes going B so, so easy. Uh, but then on A, you will need to try. And I think the idea of a default here is you might want maybe either some initiator or something, maybe a cipher even, uh, uh, you know, to just try and clear this area. If they can make sure that the defenders aren't past that line and you can, you know, reliably attack that line, that would be absolutely incredible. 
incredible. Depends exactly what you go for the team comp. That might not be fully possible. You might just have to have someone kind of hold to make sure there's no full push. Uh, but if you can, you know, get like a cypher cam here or whatever it might be to make sure that no one is even anywhere pushed up and you have control up to all the way this line, then that is going to be very, very successful as well and going to keep your options uh, very, very open indeed. Um, and then towards mid, uh, I think again, even though you might not uh, have this be the kind of brunt of your attack, again, just pushing people back, you know, your, your main players will probably be in mid, right? You'll probably want to set up at least, you know, some crossfire here to make sure that any aggression coming out of mid uh, is quickly dealt with and, you know, that's not going to be be a problem which again if you are just gonna five hit a and five hit b which i think are you know pretty reliable ways of attacking this map you don't want to be quickly flanked by mid so that's why i think in a default you'll want to make sure you have the majority of players towards mid making sure that you know no one is coming there very quick even if you don't even plan on using those areas of mid as i said it could be very good to get uh, potential lurkers in these kind of areas as well if you do start to explore you know they could uh, create a lot of threat so i think a default on this map looks like probably one uh, towards B, just making sure there's no push. One towards A, hopefully kind of getting control up towards the site and on this line. And then uh, someone being left in mid after maybe we've taken a bit of control uh, that can then become a lurker and, uh, you know, potentially get free kills. So that was Attacking Pearl. Hope you found it useful. And tomorrow, of course, we will be talking about how to defend this map. And also, I'm uh, co-streaming the VRL final. So come and join me uh, doing that. That will be happening pretty soon as well. So come and join me for that.